MBA 633 instructional video prepared by Professor Ahmed Dada, School of Management, George Mason University. In this clip, we will continue our discussion of probability with an introduction to continuous probability distributions. Uh, to set the stage, I want to uh, review a few concepts from discrete probability distributions and then make our transition over to continuous ones. So consider uh, the following experiment that's listed um, as shown on the spreadsheet here. So you catch a person at random on the street and ask them how many days they have been late for work in the previous month. Uh, <clears throat> so if we use, you remember a definition of random variables, it's simply a shorthand way of labeling the outcomes of an experiment. So if I use the letter X to represent the number of days that this person would say that they have been late for work, then you can see X is discrete. It can only take va integer values from 0 to 31 inclusive. So the person will never come back and say, I've been 2.3 days late or 2.7 days late or 3.8 days. I've either been late one day out of the month, zero days, 15 days, 17 days, and so forth. So integer, okay? So since <clears throat> the random variable X is a discrete a random variable, the probability distribution resulting from this is called a discrete probability distribution. So we would have a bunch of spikes, each spike representing the probability of the person saying that they are late for that many. Okay, so I would expect that, let's say in the Washington area, that the probability of the person saying that they are zero days late for work in the previous month would be very low, just as I would expect the probability of the person saying that they are 31 days out of 31 days late in the week, uh, in, in the month, would also be extremely low. I would expect most of the spikes to be, let's say, between zero and four, and the other spikes would be of very low height. And you remember two basic properties that any uh, discrete distribution had to obey. One is that the spikes must be non-negative. So every spike, <clears throat> so the y-axis f of x, this is simply the probability of outcome x, and x is an integer. So one of the properties was that each spike had to be non-negative. So every fx has to be greater than or equal to zero. The other one was that the sum of all the spikes must equals one. <clears throat> and that followed from the concept of a sample space. If I can enumerate all the possible outcomes from the experiment, then the sum of the likelihoods of all those outcomes must add up to one. So these are two basic properties for a discrete probability distribution. Now, let's look at what is a continuous probability distribution. So I have a different experiment here now. So uh, flight United 687 flies daily from Los Angeles to Washington Dulles. Uh, it, it's a daily flight and it's scheduled to arrive at 4.48 p.m. every day. So the experiment is to record how late the flight is on a given date. So I give you a date and I say, tell me uh, how late uh, the flight is in minutes. Okay. And just to keep things simple, let's say we know from historical data that UA 687 has never been more than 15 minutes early or more than 60 minutes late. So uh, following our previous practice, we will, let's say we use the letter X to represent the number of minutes that flight 687 is late on any particular day. So I know that X will range from minus 15, if 15 minutes early means minus 15 minutes late, up to 60. So I know that 15 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 60. I'm sorry, minus 15. Minus 15 is less than or equal to x or less than or equal to 60. But unlike the previous experiment, the flight could be late anywhere between minus 15 to 60. In other words, this random variable x, the label x, which represents how many minutes late this particular United flight is, could take an infinite number of values between minus 15 to 60. Now notice that in practice, we measure it discreetly. We say that the flight is 15 minutes early, is 10 minutes early, is seven minutes late, or is 12 minutes late and so forth. But the fact that we measure it discreetly or we report the lateness discreetly doesn't, it is really a shortcoming of our measurement. Uh, the primary issue here is that the underlying quantity being measured, time, is continuous. 
uh, whether we choose to measure it discreetly or not, that's up to us. This is fundamentally different from the previous problem. No matter how accurate we are, no matter how accurate a watch we have, no one is going to say that they are 7.6 days late for work out of 31 days. They are either 7 days late or 8 days late. So inherently the quantity being measured, the variable was discrete in the previous experiment. Whereas in this experiment, the variable is inherently continuous. So it can take an infinite number of values. Now we have a slight problem. If you have, if you think of the previous um, experiment, uh, <clears throat> we had a discrete number of spikes. Do you see since there were a discrete number of outcomes, we could identify each outcome and we could draw the spike or the probability for each outcome. Since I have an infinite number of outcomes here, I simply cannot draw an infinite number of spikes. So instead what I draw is a continuous line. So imagine putting billions and zillions of spikes together and looking at the tips of those spikes. What you would get, the shape that you would get is the distribution. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, in this particular case, because the variable is continuous, we do not refer to fx as a probability distribution. We call it a probability density function just to reflect the fact that it's a continuous variable okay so now let's assume that you know i've been lazy and i haven't bothered to actually go out to united and find out what is the pattern of lateness of this particular flight and because i've been lazy i will assume that it is equally likely that the fight flight will be 15 minutes early 60 minutes late 40 minutes late 13 minutes early so forth okay so if i assume that any of those infinite outcomes are equally likely the density function i would get looks like this looks like a rectangle and what is a rectangle is simply a bunch of infinite number of spikes stuck together of the same height and i look at the tips of those spikes i get a rectangle okay so uh, <clears throat> this is what is called a uniform continuous distribution okay rather continuous density function sorry I should be correct in using my terms continuous density function so now similar to the discrete distribution case any prob continuous probability density function must meet two conditions one is you can't have negative uh, uh, density functions. So, as before, <clears throat> the curve must lie on or above the uh, zero line. So, no non negative values are allowed. Now, the main difference is instead of a summation, since I cannot add up individual spikes and say the individual spikes must add up to zero, I say the integral of the density function from minus 15 to 60 or whatever the range happens to be must be exactly equal to 1. So I've replaced a summation by an integral. So this is <clears throat> the, uh, the main conceptual, I, actually it's not a conceptual difference but computational difference since I cannot add up an infinite number of spikes. I have to do an integration. Those of you who remember a little bit of geometry from high school days, integration is nothing but glorified summation. In fact, if you look at the sigma sign and the int integral sign, <clears throat> the integral sign is really just a corrupted version of the sigma sign. And so it's supposed to represent a summation of an infinite number of values. So this is a uniform <clears throat> density function. So the main point I wanted to make here in introducing continuous probability uh, distributions is that the random variable can take on an infinite number of outcomes. So we never usually, we do not talk about the likelihood of any one outcome since there are an infinite number of outcomes. Rather, we ask questions of the following kind. Let's say you're going to the airport to pick up your wife and you're running late, you've run into a traffic jam. And <clears throat> so you might be wondering, what is the probability that X will be greater than or equal to 15. In other words, you're hoping that the flight will be late so that you won't be, you'll be in time to pick up your wife and you want to know what is the probability that X is greater than or equal to 15. So 
instead of adding up all the spikes, we will do these calculations later on in another um, <clears throat> video clip. But I think geometrically, it's not that hard to determine what you have to do. So here is x equal to 15, 15 minutes late. So if I want to know what is the probability that the flight will be greater than or equal to 15 minutes late, I really want to add up all the spikes over here on the right hand side, okay, which is really the integral of this, whatever this shape is from here on to the right. So this would simply be the integral of uh, <clears throat> the density function from 15 to 60. Okay. And we will see how to do those um, in later clips. But for now, just remember a continuous probability distribution <clears throat> is the pattern of uncertainty resulting uh, associated with a continuous random variable. In other words, an experiment which has a continuous, um, whose outcomes uh, are, are continuous between a certain range or um, across an infinite range. So this is the basic, this concept of going from summation of probabilities to an integral. That is the main sort of computational shift you have to mind, I have to make. Uh, conceptually, the two are no different. Okay, so the you're talking about outcomes, the likelihood of outcomes, or the likelihood of the combination of outcomes. It's just that when you're working with continuous probability distributions, you have to do, maybe have to do a little calculus uh, instead of being able to do simple additions. Uh, mercifully, Excel will do most of those calculations for you, but you have to keep the concept straight in your mind in terms of what is a continuous probability uh, distribution.